Hey there, Michael here. I just wanted to have a talk about um, using the Fujifilm camera for a wedding um, on the weekend, my experience. Um, I had something I really wanted to talk about and that's how the workflow um, is a little, very different for me with the Fujifilm. I've sort of stumbled into a different workflow. Um, what happened was, you know, after the wedding, the next day, as I usually do, I started to, um, you know, load everything onto hard drives, etc., on my PC. And, um, you know, I, I'd obviously reviewed nearly all the photos as I was going, you know, through the course of the wedding in, in camera. And they all looked, you know, absolutely beautiful in camera. And I found this before with Fujifilm. Anyway, um, so I loaded all the raw images. I had backup, you know, I used um, the two card slots. I had raw and fine JPEG. So I loaded all the raw images into my computer. I loaded all the fine JPEGs into my computer in separate files. Then I put all the raw files into Lightroom. Uh, then I set about and started to process them. And as I'm processing them, I'm sort of looking at the photos and I'm thinking, they just look so, so different to the way they looked in camera. And I was thinking this can't be right. Like they look so nice and beautiful in, in the camera when I'm looking at them. And now when I've got them in Lightroom and didn't seem what I did, what adjustments I did, I just could not get them to have that beautiful look that I had when I was viewing it through my viewfinder. So, um, I was a bit frustrated. So I went to the JPEGs that I'd uploaded into another file and I just opened them with the photo viewer program, not in Lightroom and, um, windows now comes with a photo viewer application where you can make very basic adjustments such as um, cropping, you know, you can crop your image, you can adjust brightness levels, um, I think you can adjust color, and you can, it's got some presets like different sorts of, um, you know, these trendy presets like blues and oranges and sepia and black and white and all these fancy dancy sort of, um, you know, mood setting presets that they have people like to use these days anyway um so anyway just looking at the jpeg in photo viewer and the images look beautiful you know again they was absolutely gorgeous and i'm thinking here i am editing them in lightroom not getting results that i want um the colors are not the same they're looking cruddy like just looking no good not, I mean, they were all right, they're acceptable, but not what I wanted. They were not the image that I was viewing in the viewfinder. So anyway, looking at them, looking at the JPEGs just with photo viewer, and here I was back again looking at beautiful images. And I was thinking to myself, gee, I don't, I don't really need to uh, do much at all with these images. Um, maybe I'm better off just to use this photo viewer application in Windows 10 and you know just do some minor crops where needed and uh, you know I can do a little bit of um, lighting, lightning, lighting or darkening of the image that they've got an adjustment there and um, I could just do it with that I mean how simple is that and, and you know the image was already beautiful so I did that um, I went through the JPEGs in using this Windows 10 application. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And, and I did minor adjustments using, you know, the crop tool and, and just really brightening or darkening the image as needed. Um, you know, some images are a little bit underexposed, some a little over. It's pretty hard to get, you know, a hundred percent hit rate, but you know, just doing that, I didn't need to change any of the color naturally because I loved the the colors they were, the way they were. They were, they were really good. And um, I was just so happy. I was like, wow, um, here I am. You know, I'm just always going to the raw image, um, you know, with any photography that I use and, and then manipulating that. 
But here I am, um, just making minor adjustments to a JPEG. And, you know, it's fast, it's easy, the software's, you know, couldn't be simpler, really. Um, you know, I could probably give it to my mum to use and she'd probably work it out eventually. And, you know, she's like in her late 70s. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm really, really happy with um, the JPEGs straight out of camera. So, my advice would be, uh, if you're shooting Fuji, um, try and get the picture as right as you can in camera. Um, you, I mean, obviously you can see it, because it's a, a mirrorless camera, you can see what's going on. Um, I would advise to get the image at, uh, as close to what you want in camera, and then just be done with it. <laughs> You know, you don't have to go back and start manipulating things in Lightroom. Um, yeah, this is just a real, a real joy and it's making things really, really easy. So that's my takeaway for Fujifilm. Um, I'm sure people are going to say, hey, why didn't you use other programs like Capture One or whatever. But, you know, I've been using Lightroom forever, as long as I can remember and... It's what I use, it's what I'm used to, it's where all my catalogs are, it's my go-to imaging processor, but maybe that will have to change if I'm gonna go to Fuji because this has been a real eye-opener. I mean, I've sort of persevered manipulating Fuji raw images in Lightroom and I've always had a little bit of disappointment there, but I thought it was just because it was a crop sensor or something like that. But, no, no more excuses. The images are really, really good from the Fuji. And, yeah, just try it yourself. Try manipulating um, the JPEGs. Um, get them as close to as how you want them as possible in camera. And then just tweak them a little bit in some very simple photo editing software, whatever it is your choice is. Anyway, that's my takeaway from the weekend, from doing the wedding, and I hope you have a good week. Catch you later. Bye.